Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and today is Thursday, July 26, 2018. Uh, this is a midday market update uh, as we head into the final few hours of trading, and um, not a lot really to, to cover since the video I did last night. And just to sidetrack for a second, if, um, uh, if you're a member of the site, you should get an email every time a, any post is published on the front page, including any video updates, static charts, anything else. Uh, if you're subscribed to the Right Side of the Chart Daily Digest, that's for public content, um, keep in mind that digest goes out automatically at five o'clock every day, five o'clock Eastern time. If there have been any public posts made uh, since the previous update last night, I wanted to wait till the futures opened at 6 p.m. Eastern time. So I waited to do the video then. And therefore, uh, if you, you wouldn't get that uh, update until today. So just an FYI, when there's a lot of movement in the markets, anything big happens, you may want to check in on the site. Just go to right side of the chart dot com. And uh, sometimes there'll be an update posted after 5 p.m. that day. And uh, that way you can can get that in a more timely manner. All right. So uh, what's happened since uh, last night? Not a whole lot. You know, we had the big gap down uh, on, on the NASDAQ 100 with persistent selling pressure. And as I suspected, I mentioned it, you know, after Netflix originally. And then I reiterated that after we saw what happened to Facebook last night. And that would be uh, this is a kind of a heads up moment for, uh, you know, the, the beloved Fang fans, let's just say. The, I'm talking Facebook, Amazon, Microsoft, uh, Alphabet, uh, Netflix. You know, there's been for years now because these stocks have been bulletproof. They've guided earnings to a T. They've usually uh, and had a way to, to guide a little below and, and come out and always beat expectations. So there's been a trend and that led to a lot of complacency. The trend has been, you know, beat or exceed earnings. Um, and these stocks have developed a uh, can't lose type mentality you know with little fear from those longs so now with the big smackdown that netflix had after earnings and still trading well below where it closed before earnings facebook today fell flat on its face i mean they talk about a face plant uh you look at a one minute chart and this stock has actually gone nowhere and that's unusual very tight trading range you know i suspect i don't know what's going on here but i suspect that a lot of growth funds you know, when you're a growth fund manager, you usually have a certain um, uh, security selection, which is often laid out in the perspective and uh, prospectus of that fund. And if Facebook now no longer meets those criteria, you have these fund managers selling. So uh, undoubtedly, there were going to be dip buyers here. So the way you look at this, a stock is literally fallen just flat on its face and has gone relatively nowhere. We're talking just a couple point range on a $175 stock now. Um, and that just shows you that any buying today so far has been met with equal selling and obviously a lot more selling when you look at where it you know, dropped down from. But most of the selling came in the overnight session. And so far, um, not even really a dead cap bounce. It's just like a lump of clay hit the floor here. It's not going to continue forever. Facebook will pick a direction the next day or two, uh, more than likely. Here's that 170 support. Remember, if you watched the video last night, I said that's where it was at, and I expected to bounce off there, and we got that. We we that 170 is a pretty key support level. 170 down to 169, and that's where Facebook hit an after hours trading, and that's where the the bounce was to be made. Um, but uh, when you get into the regular session, you have a lot more liquidity in the institutions in the market. So there's Facebook and um, not much more to say about that. Uh, as I mentioned in the trading room today, someone asked my thoughts. I really don't know where this one goes from now. Um, just have to let the dust settle after a big move like this. What I can say is that uh, my suspicions were correct on Amazon. Uh, you know, now that these quote unquote bull bulletproof fang stocks are no longer bulletproof. We've had after what happened to Netflix, after what happened to Facebook, I, I think this is the eye opening moment for longs. And you can see that, you know, there's no news out on Amazon today. It's just a lot of selling. The stock was a minute ago down over 3%. Uh, just now everybody's worried. Wow. Maybe this company can actually have a, a disappointing earnings prize. And, and what happens in an overloved, overcrowded trade? Trade. Everybody loves these stocks, can't get enough. You have a rush for the exits. You don't have many short sellers. And that's that's what happens with Facebook. And I talk about this often. Short sellers are often vilified in the markets, but they're a natural part of the process. And they're actually good for a stock, a certain amount of short interest, because they come in and buy. When you have a short seller, if I sell a stock short, I am the only guaranteed buyers. If I, if I speak bullish on a stock, I come, you know, one of those guys comes on CNBC, oh, I like Facebook. Well, 
they may or may not buy it. They don't have to buy it. Short sellers have to buy a stock because they have to cover their position. So they are the only guaranteed buyers out in the marketplace. And when you don't have any short sellers, that's what happens. You have everybody's long. Uh, you get this. Short sellers jump in on the move down, and there's no other shorts to cover. And again, I'm speaking in relative terms. I'm not talking absolutely no. I'm talking relative low short interest. I've checked the short interest on the FANG stocks for for. Uh, months now. I always follow that stuff and it's been at the low end of its range on, on most of these companies. So there it is. And then Amazon, as I said, uh, you know, nothing technically today. This move down is just a little nervous selling in front of earnings. And as I said last night in that update, uh, tonight's earnings, they report after the bell, can go either way. But uh, this looks like a, a, a clear very clean bearish rising wedge pattern of all the market leading FANG stocks, F-A-A-M-G, Facebook, Alphabet, Apple, uh, Microsoft, and um, oh, whoever I left out there. Uh, this one is, uh, to me, the one that I would have bet the most on uh, for an earnings miss. Um, or let's just say this, forget about what they report. That has nothing to do with it. I've seen stocks blow earnings away and then turn around and sell off. And what I was going to get at, it's not the initial reaction. Uh, that comes on the earnings announcement. Then you have the conference call, but it's really what does the stock do over the next few trading sessions. So they're going to report after the bell today. Whatever happens in aftermarket after hours happens. And tomorrow we'll have the regular session that will allow, you know, the big institutions that hold this stock or the ones that want to hold it. They'll kind of sort things out. And by, you know, Probably early next week, we'll have a good idea where this stock is going, whether it's going to break down from this bearish rising wedge pattern, as the charts imply here, or whether we're going to thrust on up and, and continue. Even if we have a big pop to the upside, uh, these divergences are still uh, most likely will remain in place. We just might have to move the lines up here a little bit. Um, but, uh, you know, as always, it's always a crapshoot going into earnings. But... With that being said, just like Facebook, with that run-up that they had, and I said this before they announced uh, yesterday, um, that they had zero margin for error after such a strong advance. And while this was a more, you know, pretty steep advance off the April lows on Facebook, uh, you know, Amazon has steadily climbed, um, you know, not as much, but a, a pretty, pretty darn strong advance. So again, that's all my, I'm trying to make the point is that they have a little margin for error. Uh, on what they report tonight and what they say as far as their forward guidance goes. So stay tuned. We'll, you know, I'll do an update tomorrow or maybe later today on, on Amazon. Now let's get back to the market. So, you know, uh, earlier today, and for the most part, uh, the SPY, everything else has hung, has hung in there. I'm not seeing a lot of cracks in the market. Junk bonds were up. Last I checked, let me look at that right now. That's something I watch as well, the credit spreads. Yeah, the junk bonds are trading almost flat. Um, there's QQQ. Again, on the daily chart, this is what I'm looking at, this large wedge here, and there's a potential price target down there. That's what I'm favoring at this point in time. Uh, let's look at uh, the 60-minute chart. And the Qs are holding support. Again, I believe this was covered in last night's update. That 180-ish level right there, that's uh, support, and that's where the, where the Qs have fallen to. So we're down about 1.32% right now. And this was resistance. We broke out. We back tested it once, and now we're back testing again. So that's a level to watch. If that goes, next supports this trend line, and then you can see all the levels down here. Uh, so this is where I think uh, QQQ is going. Uh, I still favor a move down to at least T2 here. And, and uh, if I'm going to get it, it's probably going to happen very soon. It'll probably come after Intel and Amazon report tonight, is my guess. In other words, we can hit this um, as early as tomorrow. Uh, if I'm right. And if I'm not right, we'll see what happens. Maybe this takes a little bit longer to play out. But uh, again, I wouldn't be surprised uh, to see that hit uh, tomorrow, as early as tomorrow or next week. And here's the SPY 60 minute chart. Uh, wedging on up continues to make a divergent high. Uh, so like I said, you know, just because these divergences didn't play out here, um, they're still very much intact. You can see the PPO starting to roll over. This little arrow shows that, you know, with the PPO found support, that 9 EMA uh, found support at the zero line, which is often the case. And that, you know, when that 9 EMA, that dotted white line there is above zero, the trend is bullish and below bearer. So if this chart plays out the way I expect, and again, looking at the shape of this wedge, you can see we wedged here, had a little sideways correction. We continue to wedge higher here, still a divergent high. 
if this plays out the way I expect, uh, we'll probably see us move down soon. I think this will break down again, if, if, uh, depending on what happens with Intel and Amazon. Uh, that could break down as early as tomorrow and um, may flip that trend indicator over to bearish. So that's what SPY looks like on the 60-minute chart. I uh, can't recall if I've covered these. Uh, let me just make sure. Uh, the uh, ES, this is the ES 60-minute chart. ES or the S&P 500 E-mini futures. Here's a trend line right now. This is the trend line that I'm watching here. And you can see the negative divergence right here as well on the futures as we push on up. And, um, of course, NQ is the one I'm really watching now. Uh, let's try to pull that chart up. Give me a second here. Okay, there it is. Uh, so there it is. Here you can see we had a divergent high here, a little one, and a little correction. Pushed up another divergent high, another little correction. And we continue to diverge. That's the point here. So these divergence lines simply get extended at this point. And uh, there's that divergent high. So far it's played out. It took us down here impulsively. And this is the trend line to watch right here. Uh, so you can see comparable levels, uh, not exactly what you see in QQQ, but very similar. Remember the futures, I like to glance at that because it shows you the round the clock trades versus just the 9.30 to 4 o'clock trades that we were looking at on QQ. Finally, to wrap this up, um, show you one trade idea we did today. Uh, you know, if members, uh, I often get asked, you know, what's the difference of the free content on the site versus membership? You know, I'm, I'm most active in the trading room. For every front page post I make or trade idea, there's there's a two, three, four dozen or more entries and other trade ideas, chart opinions I give members in the trading room. This morning, uh, this is a stock I highlighted in recent videos. This is a trucking stock, KNX. Uh, so this morning I noticed it down big. It was down about, oh God, I think 20% at the time. And so I put out a post. I took a position, said it had support at 29 for a day trade op. And, and uh, there's that $29 support. There's a big old gap here, a gap back here, and extremely oversold and with bullish potential bullish divergence. So really as a day trade, what I look at um, is I go to the one minute charts and I mentioned taking uh, first a lot just above 29 and then a second lot there. My average cost, let me look at another monitor, was uh, 212, 29.12. So, uh, and I posted both entries, uh, followed up with charts. Uh, you know, when, it, when things happen quick, this is where I took my first lot and then second lot here and uh, posted that uh, intraday analysis. It had it going up here to about that $30 level and then mentioned on the next breakout, you know, in the updates, again, charts were posted along that uh, the next time it was, you know, to run up to it, I expected a break above 30, and it did that, it took it out here, back tested, and then boom, and I posted my target in advance. Uh, so that's about a six and a half, six point six percent 6.6% gain, and these are the type of trade ideas that will often make it in the trading room. Uh, day trades are not really the core what I do. I'm, I'm primarily a swing trader, as are all the official trade ideas on the right side of the chart, anything that makes the front page. But day trading, ops, sometimes futures, uh, different things like that will make it uh, make their way into the trading room. And um, again, that's what it's all about. Now, what I'm going to do is instead of just showing you what I did today, I'll give a freebie. I've had a lot of good feedback on the YouTube channel. I want to thank everybody for that. I want to let you know I do not, I just don't have the time to monitor that channel. My, my you know, the bulk of my day goes into analyzing charts, uh, doing my own trading, and then, of course, answering questions for members, providing chart requests. Uh, and there's just not enough time in the day to uh, keep up with the YouTube channel, especially as it grows. But I do thank you for the uh, you know positive feedback. And I'm going to share one idea with you here. I had a member ask me about the VIX today. And uh, uh, there were actually a couple comments on it. So I shared this chart. Uh, I think the VIX offers a tremendous risk return right here. Now, what I mean by that is there's no guarantee it will play out, but I think it looks like a good long here. And what I have on this chart, this is a two-year daily chart of VXX. This is one of numerous VIX tracking ETNs. Um, uh, there's several ways to trade the VIX. Sometimes you can you can you can trade VIX futures, uh, options on VIX futures, or you can trade one of these ETNs. They don't make good long-term holds. I'll tell you that right now. They're going to decay over time. They all lose money over time. But if you get in and out quickly at the right time, so uh, you can make some good money. So let's just say that uh, you know my bearish scenario plays out. Let's say whatever Amazon and Intel report over the next you know tonight and whatever happens over the next week or so, the market does go down those 60 minute divergences do play out 
even those daily divergences. Uh, what I've highlighted here, uh, and I've shared this chart on the site in the past, DL means divergent low. So we had a divergent low right here, and I'm referring to the PPO and the RSI, my, two of my go-to indicators. There's others I use at times, but these are my some of my favorites. Uh, so there it is. You can just see the statistics. Divergent low, one, 22% rally. Divergent to uh, low, two, 26% rally. We had a divergent low here, 20%, 18%, 28%, 117%, 34%. And as you can see here, uh, we've come full circle once again, divergent low. And uh, I'll even again, normally trade ideas, whether they're official or, official or reserved for members. But again, this is a kind of a thank you for the YouTube fans. And that's uh, nothing's guaranteed to play out, but uh, that first target, let me move it for you. I have resistance there at 39.59, and then the next target up here would be about $53. Uh, based on this divergent, this is the second low. It's usually that second or third you can get a really nice pop, but either way, that would be my minimum target. And talking about risk reward, so given there's no buy signal there's not i shouldn't say that in proper english there's not any buy signals right now uh, for vxx nor do we have any sell signals on the broad market right now but we have those divergences and more often than not which again is not always but more often than not they do play out so this one plays out here's what you're looking at and i think it will i think there's a good chance uh a pop up there uh, maybe reaction, or we can even bust straight through it and go up there. Sometimes this VIX just really takes off after some divergences. Uh, certainly, when I look at the longer-term charts of the U.S. markets, I can see the potential for a, a blast right on through that 3960-ish level all the way up here. Um, possibly beyond, but we'll see. Uh, but there it is. So you can see the negative divergence. There was divergence at that first low right here at this point with the indicators making higher lows. Uh, versus prices making lower lows, and we got a 34% pop uh, to try to quantify it for you. And then we'll wrap this video up. So if I'm trying to grab roughly where we're at today, my measuring tool will pop up in the upper left-hand corner, and you can see that'd be about a 30% pop to that first target. And if that second target is hit, that's about a 74% pop. So if you look at from a risk reward perspective, if you use a three to one RR, which is usually my minimum risk return uh, that I look for. In other words, I'll risk a dollar of loss for $3 of profit. So that would give you about a 10% stop loss. So, you know, if you went long, even in advance of a breakdown in the markets, and right now VXX is at 3071, you could have a stop there around 2750, give or take. That's a 10% stop to make 30%, uh, a little bit over 30% in profit. And um, of course, you can let it run. You can take profits there if we get there that's certainly i think a, a significant resistance level and i had the question put to me in the trading room do divergences in the volatility indexes really work absolutely they work well first of all i just showed you right here i mean there's that proof is in the pudding you can see all those divergent lows marked and the rallies that came afterwards but it's not really you know complicated because the vix and um or the vxn vxn is the the uh volatility index for the NASDAQ and the VIX tracks, the, uh, I believe it's the S&P 500 volatility index. They, they will work almost, their charts will look almost inverse to the indexes themselves. And that makes sense because when the market's rallying, volatility is falling. That, and you can see this was that unprecedented period of low volatility, never before seen in the financial markets. Vol volatility index reached their lowest levels, and we had a unprecedented period of low volatility. And that led into that big, sharp correction that we had in January. And you can see the VIX shot up there. So again, it, it makes sense. When the market's correct, um, the VIX usually goes up. And uh, when, vol when the markets are rising, the VIX goes down. And so plain and simply put, that's why um, these divergences can work. It's not rocket science, because if you look at the same time, in almost all instances, you'll have negative divergence on the S&P 500 or the uh, NASDAQ. Um, so there it is. So there's a potential trade idea for you, and we'll wrap it up here. This has been Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, a uh, thumbs up on YouTube would be appreciated. Thank you.